Teach me, Lord, to know your ways, to know your truth. Lord, I want to know you better than I know me.
service into your hands and we pray that may you take over from us O oh God may you minister to us this evening O oh God thank you Lord for the worshipers who are gathered here thank you Lord for the choirs thank you Lord for the preacher the every team and everyone Lord we pray for your special anointing upon your ministers O oh God may you use them for your glory may you use us for your glory O oh God and Heavenly Father, we continue to pray for our brothers and sisters who are not yet here. May you clear the roads for them, O oh God, that you'll bring them safely to this place. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Dear friends, you're all very welcome. Turn to your neighbor, welcome your neighbor, at least on your left and your right. At least two people as we continue. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You're all very welcome. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
the spirit of the Lord is here. Amen. Amen. You are all very welcome on this Monday, Thursday, and we'll follow the order. You'll follow on the screen as we continue. You're all very welcome, and let's continue with the order of service. A new commandment that I give you, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may we join and say the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Unless I was your feet, you have no part with me. Let us confess our sins to Almighty God and ask him to cleanse us. We shall all join in that prayer and pray together. We say, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in what we have said and done through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and mirrored your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins for the sake of your son Jesus Christ who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and lead us to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We shall all join in that in that gloria and say it together together glory to god in the highest and peace to his people on earth lord god heavenly king almighty god and father we worship you we give you thanks we praise you for your glory lord jesus christ only son of the father Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayers, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we shall join in the collect and we pray together. God our Father, you have invited us to share in the supper which your son gave to his church to proclaim his death until he comes. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, we all say, Amen. And as we remain standing, we shall join to say Psalm 116, Psalm 116, all together. How shall I repay the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Grievous in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O oh Lord, I am your servant, your servant and the son of your handmaid. You have lost my bones. I 
I will pay my vows to the Lord in the courts of the house of the Lord, even in the midst of Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Once again, you're very welcome. For those outside, you may come in. You are all very, very welcome, and we are blessed to have this great team before us. Let's welcome them with a hand clap. Yes, you're very welcome, and let's open our hearts to the Lord. May God richly bless you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we happy to be in the house of the Lord? So we are, and uh, we are so happy to see you. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we are going to worship. We are going to praise God. Amen. Let us worship and praise Him joyfully. Amen. Because He's our God. He loves us. He has sustained our lives. And He's still doing that. Amen. Amen. Good and your mercy and you read Yeah, yeah. 
his name high by thanking him and saying thank you for such a wonderful day for allowing you even to come for this service thanking him for him being with you in all ways whenever you pray he answers whenever you ask him he hears and gives you the answer and so thank him for whatever he's doing in your life you may be actually some things you touch them and others you don't but he's always there imagine the peace that you have imagine the love that he loves you with imagine you being alive the life that you have you can't touch it but it is there imagine him being with you all through father we thank you for your presence we thank you king of kings because when you are present in our lives all things are possible because king of kings when you are present we fight every temptation when you are present in our lives oh dear lord we find ourselves moving every mountain that is what you tell us O king of kings king of glory because i when you went on the mountain and gets us a man father lord almighty you said at least watch and pray such that you don't fall into temptation and father here we are praying to you that lord we don't fall into temptation king of kings king of glory and today as we commemorate remembering the day that you ate your last supper with your disciples of god king of kings we are here to say thank you for that love we are here to say thank you king of kings king of glory for sending your dear son to come and die for us sinners so that we can be free from every kind of king of kings sin so that when we come to you you say whosoever believes will have eternal life and lord that is why we are here to say thank you for your son to say thank you for your power to say thank you king of kings king of glory for you are with us and you will always be with us father thank you for what you are doing in the lives of your children thank you king of kings for this week starting sunday up to today children are receiving you king of kings king of glory we see you o king of kings in the halls of residence we see you up above on this hill of makerere we see you king of kings king of glory you have always been and you are still and you will remain our god or father lord we pray that in your mercy you will touch each and everyone king of kings king of glory as we celebrate this passion week of god king of kings king of glory even tomorrow as we remember the day that you died on the cross king of kings we pray that you be with us help us to repent oh god where we go wrong help us so king of kings king of glory to acknowledge our sin and after acknowledging our sin father lord we come to you we worship you and we adore you we know that there is no any other person like you so thank you father we pray that you be with us in this service father lord everything that will take place here may it be for your glory king of kings king of glory be with each and every person who will take part in this service of our father we pray for the preacher oh god that you speak to him as he brings your word father lord almighty we pray for everyone who lead in the sacrament we pray king of kings king of glory even as we do what you did oh king of kings king of glory we pray that you continue to guide us and to wash us we honor you abba father we thank you for your humility we thank you king of kings king of glory for your love and mercy we honor your presence oh god thank you abba father thank you king of kings we continue to pray for the church father lord almighty in the whole world we pray for the church in uganda we pray for saint francis in particular we thank you for the leadership of father lord king of kings we pray king of kings for this university makerele that lord god you will continue to be with us that you will continue to cover this hill with your precious blood that your holy spirit of oh god will continue to move in each and every prayer abba father touch each and everyone in this prayer oh god king of kings let us see you and let us understand that it is because of you that we live we honor you and we praise your holy name be with us and remain with us we thank you king of kings king of glory wash us we pray 
we honor you and we give you all the glory and all this we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. A big hand clap to the Lord. Big hand clap, big hand clap, big hand clap. And I will invite those to take us in the ministry of God's word. Give them a hand clap as well as they come. Praise the Lord. Good evening. Our reading is from Exodus chapter 12, starting with verse 1. Exodus 12, starting with verse 1. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor. Having taken into account the number of the people they are, you are to determine the amount of the lamb needed in, the, in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year-old males without defeat, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs, that that same night they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with the bitter herbs and blade made without yeast. This is how you are to eat it. With your crock tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand, eat it in haste. Eat. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will, the blood will be a sign of you on the, house, on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive probe will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate for the generations to come. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting adonance. This is the word of the Lord. Praise God. The second reading of today is taken from the first Corinthians chapter 11, starting from verse 23. First Corinthians chapter 11, starting from verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, we never eat the bread or drink the cup of the Lord in, in an unwashed manner. We'll be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without 
without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. Brethren, receive the word of God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, written in the 18th chapter, beginning to read from the 21st verse, we say together, Glory be to you, Christ our Lord. Matthew 18, verse 21. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall I shall my brother sin against me and how and I forgive him up to seven times Jesus said to him I do not say to you up to seven times but up to seventy times seven therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants and when he had begun to settle Accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and the children, all that he had, and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarius. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. Friends, the gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God for thy holy gospel. We shall remain standing and boldly confess what we believe in through the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all that is visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten not made, one in being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered died and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, and he has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please turn to your neighbor and welcome them in the presence of God on this Monday, Thursday. Welcome, welcome. How do we call this Thursday? Do you know what it means? Please turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor to, you know, just bring you up to speed. What does it mean? Why Monday, Thursday? <laughs> How significant it is? Oh. <laughs> I see many who don't want to look at their neighbors. <laughs> but you're all very, very welcome. Well, you're very welcome. It's a special Thursday. If not called Monday, Thursday, M-A-U-N-D-Y. It's called Holy Thursday. Monday comes from a Latin word, mandatum, which means commandment. And on this day, Jesus gave a new commandment many years ago. And what do you think that commandment was? Uh -huh. Let's give it up for the person who is whispering there. Yes, love one another. Hallelujah. And on this very day, we, there are two significant events that happened. What happened on this day many years ago? Number one, yes, he instituted um, the Holy Communion or the Last Supper, the Last Supper he had with his disciples. And number two, what happened? Good. He washed the disciples' feet. So also today we want to do what Jesus did. We have the Last Supper the Holy Communion, and we shall also, also wash the dirty feet of people that God will choose. Are you excited? Oh, we have Peter's here. What did Peter say? Mm -mm 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 -mm. My master do not do that. So anyway, it's a day that really signifies and demonstrates to us Jesus' humility. He was a humble servant, a humble teacher and leader. A big hand clap to our God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So this day is very, very significant, and we just don't want it to just pass us by. We really want to go back in history and remember what Jesus did so that we who are his feet and his hands today, we can represent him right. Hallelujah. And my prayer is that as a church, we will be having on Monday, Thursdays, that we'll be having a meal together. I know we've been feeding, dining with Jesus uh, throughout this Lenten period, but for Monday, Thursday, a little bit special. In many of the different churches where I've served, we've always had a meal after a Monday service. So please don't run off. I know we've been sharing with our friends, so you're all welcome to dinner. Hallelujah. You'll eat the little we have. Jesus will multiply. Praise the Lord. So don't just run off. We'll eat what is there to just remember what Jesus did before his disciples. And also always remembering that St. Francis Chapel is a chapel that is all about Jesus Christ and loving his people. And we love to say this is where Jesus resides. So if Jesus is here with us, if this is his church, he resides in his church, I believe St. Francis Chapel should be a place for love, a place where God's children feel at home and they are loved, sharing the little that we have. So we thank God for this day, many years ago in history, Jesus instituted all that we're going to do, and I pray that he will speak to you through the symbolism that you will see today. Praise the Lord. Wow, we thank God for this Holy Week. It's been quite busy for us, but very exciting. Uh, we have been having services from Monday today to today, and tomorrow we'll be having. But after the services, we've been going to different halls of residence. Are there people who have been escorting us and going with us by show of hand? Anyone? Yes, I see a few <laughs> ones. Oh, it's been wonderful. Yesterday was a little bit busy and tricky. Because we have been having one team, but because the holes are many, we now had to go to three holes at the same time. Lumumba and Box were together, and we also went to University Hall. And let me tell you, it was a great time. We did it, Jesus did it th through us. Hallelujah. <laughs> and it's interesting, I found out that majority of us here come from hostels, 
And uh, the people we've been engaging with in the different halls, actually many of them don't even come for these services. So we really thank God that he has allowed us to do ministry, not only to we who gather here and those online, but he has also allowed us to reach out to those who, you know, for one reason or the other, do not come for services. So we pray that next time we shall also come to your hostels. I don't know which hostel we shall visit first, but we pray that Bascon, eh? Oh, <laughs> I pray that God will help us. I know sometimes it gets um, wearying, but I know God gives us the strength that even when we are weak, he strengthens us. So I want to thank the team. In a special way, let's appreciate Reverend Barnett, who is the priest in charge of mission, sale, and discipleship. Thank you, Reverend Barnett. We've been having, uh, today is our last day, actually, we are going to Michlex, Diamond Mitchell Dining Hall. If you want to join us, we shall be so happy uh, to join in with you. So we'll be happy, feel free to join us. Uh, Reverend Barnett put teams together. The missionaries have been helping us. Are there young men and women that have been helping in mission groups? Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you. I was so happy to see some of our young men and ladies act yesterday. Oh, it was great. So we pray that God will continue to equip us so that we can use every tool and every gift to preach God's word. Praise the Lord. And we want to thank our admin, administrator Sarah, she likes to sit up. Sarah, please stand up. Thank you. She's really making, been making sure that yeah, she's up there. Thank you so much. Making sure that really everything is in order. That's her job as the administrator. Making sure that every, our guests are catered for. Making sure that they have food, that at the halls of residence, everything is there. So we thank you. God bless you and meet you at your point of need. By the way, she's getting married soon so we need to squeeze all the life out of her before she gets married <laughs> because as a single lady then when she's married we'll have to first ask <laughs> the man of god in her life so we are praying for you but we also want to thank the audio and visual team oh my goodness god bless you young men and ladies you've done an amazing job we've been living here very late may god bless you and give you what you are really desiring to have in your life but also let's appreciate our clergy, Reverend Scovia, uh, Uncle John, uh, Reverend Barnett, Odinan Sam. They've been doing so, so well. And the choirs that have been leading from Monday to today. Today we have the Thursday choir. You know, this is a team, team ministry and my desire is to see many of you join ministry. My desire is to see many of you come and use your gifts. So don't sit and just warm the pews. If you think you can do something, just come to us and say, I want to volunteer here. I want to serve here. I mean, time, life is too short. And Jesus is coming back. So we really don't have time to waste. We want to use every minute to see to it that we win souls for the Lord. Uh, my agenda is to empty hell and fill. Full and, 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 and empty hell and make heaven full. We depopulate heaven, we depopulate hell and populate heaven. That's my prayer. And may the Lord use St. Francis Chapel. Praise the Lord. We have been working with a team. I met uh, this gentleman last year. He, came visit, he visited me at home. We connected. We all love young people. Actually, when you look at him, you might think he's just 13 years old. When you look at me, you might think I'm just 16 years old. Kumbe. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we met, I met this guy, and when we rubbed shoulders and connected, we just said, come, next year, why don't you come and do ministry with us? And this gentleman took it on. He mobilized his people from uh, Nairobi, Kenya, the Anglican Church of Uganda, and we thank God that they arrived on Sunday. They've been with us doing ministry. Let's put our hands together and welcome Reverend John Mark. Reverend John Mark, oh, he is amazing. He will put on his costume and act with a team. We need such ministers. So please say hello to us and tell us something. Praise the Lord. Buana Sifiwe. How are you? Have you been blessed this holy week? If you've missed a blessing, please, you have missed a blessing. But if you've been blessed, tell your neighbor, I have been thoroughly blessed. I want to thank God for the opportunity to, to be back here after many years. 
But the thing the Lord has done in this last one week has been beautiful. And I realize we share a lot of things in common. I am in a business. I'm a businessman. And I do what we call clearing and forwarding. And we just realized we're doing the same business. I am clearing hell and forwarding them to heaven. So that's what I do. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I'm in the clearing and forwarding. She's populating heaven and she's making sure emptying hell. That's called clearing and forwarding. So we are in the same business. Praise the Lord. I thank God for the opportunity. It's a beautiful moment. It's a joy. It's been a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful time. And we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. So if you don't show up tomorrow, please don't send your spirit because we would not want to see your spirit hanging around. We would all run away. I'm sure if they send their spirits, that bishop would be wondering what's happened to St. Francis. So please personally come tomorrow. Is that okay? Hello? Yes. You will be there tomorrow? Yes. And we were told we bring how many people? So how many 10 of your friends are coming? Can you count them so that you're sure? Yes, please, because you might be saying 10 and then tomorrow morning is like, by the way, I forgot to tell my friends. Uh, Nani, are you coming? Where? To the rugby, rugby grounds. Like, what's happening there? You didn't know? They might ask you, you mean you want to go to heaven alone? Please make sure you're leaving no one behind. Praise the Lord. Thanks so much. I bring greetings again. Um, from where I work. I work in the Archbishop's office in Nairobi, and therefore His Grace knows I am here, praise the Lord, and my office knows I'm here, so I was just telling her that I keep working, and I keep working even when I'm here. I'm organizing a conference for Sunday school teachers, so during this week, I've gotten the speakers, I've gotten the venue, I've gotten all that in place, and when I go back, we'll put up the posters, and we're looking forward. So the joy is this. We are in a kingdom business, and our desire is we are leaving no one behind. Praise the Lord. So please make sure you're part of that team. Amen. Well, let's appreciate Reverend John Mark. He's been so good and still is with us. Um, we have been, of course, we always have our devotions in the morning, Monday to Friday. So that service has committed people diligent people, men and women that come here 7 to 8. So tomorrow, again, we shall be here 7 to 8 and crown, for those that have been coming, crown the Lenten period, and I've asked Reverend John Mark to come and share, and we shall crown that together. And then 9, 9, we have a good Friday service. So the 7 to 8 is different, but then 9 to, 9 to 11, is the Good Friday service that we are going to have. And after that, the children, Children's Church, they will be having a ministry activity. They'll be going around to preach the gospel. Maybe our children are here and they want to join them. It will be after that service. They will be moving door to door to preach the gospel and share the little things God has given to them with the people or the children in the community. And after that, we shall be having a team that will join our brothers and sisters at St. Augustine to go for the way of the cross. Reverend Scovia will be leading for that team, and Reverend Barnett will join. If you want to be a part, they've given us five stations where we're going to pray at. They'll be starting at VET, walking here at 1.30. So you want to join those who are going for the way of the cross, feel free to join in, Okay. You know, we love to say church is like a place where you get a buffet. There will be several things, and feel free to eat what the Lord gives to you. And you might not be in everything, but as the Lord convicts you, feel free. And uh, after that, that will be five. Fives or roads lead to rugby grounds. We're going to be there. Our archbishop is going to be coming. Thank you, Reverend John Mark, for reminding all of us. Please, let's invite many of our friends and let's be there so that his grace will also lead us as we worship the Lord and we'll bring God's word. It's been interesting in the halls of residence talking about my identity. We crown up that theme tomorrow. Please do not stay behind. Do not miss out. And after that, again, we'll be having our virtual night of prayer. So you see why we tell you, please pray for us. A lot is happening, but let me tell you, we are not about to give up. When we are weak, God strengthens us. His strength is made perfect. Because we have our routine, 
that every Friday we have a virtual night and first Friday, like next Friday, we shall be having a physical overnight. So please pray for your ministers and if you want to participate, do not hesitate. On Sunday, all the young people, do we have young people in the presence of the Lord? Youth, praise the Lord. Yes. Students, praise the Lord. Yes. Great. During the youth service, that's 5 p.m. I know some of you are going to be around. You will not be going home. We are having a movie night. Okay, movie evening. Come and watch a movie during the youth connection. And I'm sure you will be blessed. So that is the lineup. It's been a busy week, but I know the grace of God is sufficient. We are privileged to have the minister who's bringing God's word to us. Sorry, I've taken a little bit of your time because I wanted you to get this clearly. Uh, we are privileged today to have the minister who has been with us since Sunday. And I'm sure many of us have learned a great deal from him. And that is none other than Professor, a Reverend Canon Professor Peter Nyende, who is coming to bring God's word to us. Let us clap. We shall ask the choir to give us a chorus from there, just a chorus. And after that, he will come. We can just do you are here moving in this place. We worship you, and then he will come. Mark 14, verse 12 to 16. And then I'll read from verse, jump to verse 22 up to 25. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when this sacrifice the Passover lamb his disciples said to him where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover and he sent two of his disciples and said to them go into the city 
and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the householder, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I am to eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. There, prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. Verse 22 to 25. And as they were eating, he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your word. As we have read it in the gospel according to Mark, of which I want now to share my reflections on with your people. I ask that you move in our hearts and minds that in my preaching your people will hear something of the voice of, their, of your spirit as you speak to them. In Jesus' name, amen. As I said yesterday, Holy Week is about uh, recounting the events that took place in the life of Jesus prior to his crucifixion, which we shall observe uh, tomorrow. And these are meant to inspire us, renew us, and strengthen us. And that is why we have every year in our calendar the Holy Week. And I pray that those who have been coming to um, the services during this week have found some renewal and strength and also inspiration for your Christian living and in your faith. This evening we want to look at the Lord's Supper. Now, from what we have read, it is clear that the context of the Lord's Supper is the Passover. In verse 12 we read, on the first day of unleavened bread. Because that's how it was called as well. Now, Passover was not an event that took place only on one day. It was a seven days event and it took place in the evening and during the month when the people of Israel were delivered from the bondage and slavery of Egypt. And I want us to track it down from the Old Testament. So let us turn to Deuteronomy 16, verse 1 to 8. Deuteronomy 16, verse 1 to 8. Because unless we understand the Passover, we will not really come to a proper grasp of the Lord's Supper as was intended. 
So we read in Deuteronomy 16. There are other places where you can read about the Passover, but these I have chosen uh, to look at this evening. Verse 1. Observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover of Yahweh your God. Why? For in the month of Abib, Yahweh your God brought you out of Egypt at night. So it is in the month of Abib when they were delivered from Egypt. But besides that, this fan is disrupting my pages. If it can be switched off, please. Two, and you shall offer the Passover sacrifice to the Lord from the flock or the herd at the place which Yahweh will choose to make his name dwell. Now let us get more details of the practice. You shall eat no leavened bread with it, that is with the Passover sacrifice, Seven days you shall eat it with unleavened bread, the bread of affliction. For you came out of the land of Egypt in a hurried flood, that all the days of your life you may remember the day when you came out of the land of Egypt. So here, the month coincides with when they were delivered from Egypt. Seven days they are to observe the Passover by sacrificing in the evening and making sure that they eat that meal, that sacrificed lamb with unleavened bread before the dawn of the next day. This was really the practice. But there is more. There is more. For those who are unable to come to Jerusalem, to the temple, to observe the Passover, or who were ritually unclean, something else was added and was part and parcel of the Passover. And this we get from Numbers. So if you go back, Numbers chapter 9. And verses 9 to 11. Yahweh said to Moses, say to the people of Israel, if any man of you or of your descendants is unclean through touching a dead body or is afar off on a journey, he shall still keep the Passover of Yahweh. In the second month, on the 14th day, in the evening, they shall keep it. They shall leave none of it until the morning, nor break a bone of it according to all the statutes of the Passover. So they too were to do so. But, uh, sorry, I, I, I passed over the last... Um, close of verse 11 they shall eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs so you have the addition of bitter herbs the only thing that they are not able to do is to offer the sacrificial lamb which they eat in celebration of the feast so what then we have is seven days period of eating in the evening, a celebration really, but also a memorial where they reenact what happened through the food. Passover lamb reminding them of the sacrifice of lambs that each one of them gave to the Lord that he may pass over their houses. 
bitter herbs to remind them of the terrible experiences they had when they were in bondage in Egypt. Unleavened bread to remind them that when that bread was prepared, it had to be prepared in a hurry. And for that reason, there was no time to put in yeast. So you then have a meal that is a memorial, but a celebration. So it is a feast. And for that reason, you also have wine. Wine was the drink for celebration. There was no celebration without wine. So what you end up with then are four foods of, that are eaten during the Passover. Each of them with a meaning. The lamb sacrificed in the temple but eaten at home, bitter herbs, unleavened bread, and of course wine. All this in the service of remembering the people, of reminding the people of their deliverance from bondage and slavery in Egypt by the hand of the Lord. And we see that during the time of Jesus, they were keeping the Passover. And time came. On the first day of the seven is where we meet this narrative. And it was not an accident that Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper on this day and over this meal. This is clear because we see the hand of God at work. The disciples ask, where will we prepare to eat the Passover? Where will we feast? And Jesus does not say, let us look for a house. No. Go into the city, he says, and you'll find a man carrying a jar of water. Follow him. No exchange of words. Simply follow him. And where he enters, say to the owner of the house, where he enters, the teacher says, where is my guest room? Where am I to eat the Passover with my disciples? Extraordinary. If you think about it. This man has not met Jesus. And yet, those words would be enough to allow them in. And indeed, when they say that Jesus says, he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. I have no at times I try to imagine, you know, the circumstances behind the preparation of that room. Because it was ready. Ready. Set for the Passover. Could it be that this man prepared in anticipation of guests? Did he prepare it in anticipation of celebrating it himself? With his family, only God knows because he was the one at work. But what we need to note is that God went ahead of them and prepared this because it was significant. It was significant. Now, let us move forward. The Passover is the springboard of the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper follows in the footsteps of Passover. 
Very, very important for us to remember that. And then the Lord's Supper can be likened to Passover. In a nutshell, the practice of Passover structures the practice of the Lord's Supper. So we move to 22. As they were eating, it was customary that the head of the house, as they were eating, to take the elements and speak concerning them in a way that reminded them of the slavery in Egypt that Yahweh had delivered them from. Because that was the purpose of the meal. A memory, a memorial to remember what God had done. Of course, in thanksgiving and praise. And this was to be with them always. Now, they would have taken the bread and say, during Passover, the bread of affliction. As we read in Deuteronomy 16. Now here, Jesus takes the bread, blesses it, breaks it, and says, take, this is my body. So the Passover meal that is the context of the Lord's Supper that the Lord's Supper follows in terms of practice and springs out of is converted into something else. At that point, it is no longer a Passover meal. Because Jesus does not say the bread of affliction. It is not even bread anymore. He says, this is my body. Now, the, if we bring in the other narratives of the Gospels, we get a little bit more content. The body broken for you. Now, Jesus is referring to himself that the bread is his body. So this is now a different meal. It's no longer Passover. They are feeding on his body. Then he takes the cup, verse 22, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank it. And he said, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. That is a new thing, because with wine, there was no interpretation of the drink. It was simply a celebration, a feast. And wine was really the drink for celebration. So there was really no pronouncement upon the wine. The pronouncement was on the bread, on the bitter herbs, and that was it. But now Jesus takes the wine and interprets it for this meal that it is the one that marks the beginning of the new covenant according to the uh, uh, prophecies of the prophets. And, of course, for the forgiveness of sins, which Mark does not capture, but the other gospel narratives do. So, in this is an interesting um, uh, 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 experience, but if we tune ourselves to the mind of the Israelites, 
we can begin to understand what was going on. He has reinterpreted this meal. And he's saying he will not drink again or celebrate until the kingdom of God comes. So it is tied to the end. But, not mentioned here, Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. What then Jesus is doing is pointing to an imminent event. He's dying. He's dying. And letting them know, although that event is in the future, but an imminent one, it should be remembered. Always. Because it is of such importance, it has to be remembered materially. Not just verbally. In fact, in the whole gospel, it is the only thing that Christ asked to be done physically. And that really throws into sharp relief the importance of the event that was about to take place. That Jesus commanded the disciples to always eat a meal in memory so that they will never forget in the same way as Passover for the people of Israel. Every year for seven days, not one, seven days they ate the Passover. In that context, Jesus changes the meaning of, of Passover, of that meal that was Passover to be the Lord's Supper and he says, always eat this meal in memory. Because of the events that were to happen and the significance of those events, which I will finish with. But for now, let me just continue pressing this point. There are many ways of, that people can remember things. We can keep talking about things. You know, we can have activities to remind us about things. But... One of the ways that make something really not come out of the memories of people is a frequent um, material observation. In other words, we, something is done that is material that we can touch, see, hear, that is connected to that event. It is very difficult for people to forget about that when it is done repeatedly. And so Passover was to make them never forget that experience. And again, going back to the people of Israel, really it was Passover where they were asked they must always do this to remember. And now Jesus talks of another meal. It was not called the Lord's Supper. This is us naming it the Lord's Supper. He didn't give it a name. But instituted a meal. A memorial meal. That at that point of institution pointed to something imminent. His death which was coming. Pointing forward to his death that was coming but also Reminding them, telling, commanding them rather that they should always have this meal to remember that imminent event. And this is why to this day we have what we call Holy Communion, Lord's Supper, Eucharist. Whatever name we have, the important thing is to know there was a meal instituted by Jesus. To remind us, his disciples, and us about his sacrifice. His body broken, his blood poured. The, 
why, why is this so important? Why was this so important? God has no partnership with sin. Where God is, there is no place for sin. In the kingdom of God, there is no immorality. In the kingdom of God, there are no untoward behavior in the heart or in action. God has no place for wickedness, he has no partnership with evil. So much so that it is evil, it is disobedience to God that made the world fall apart. This is what messed up Adam and Eve and the whole of humanity. Disobedience. Wickedness, evil. Immorality, impurity, all names you can find in the Bible describing sin. Sin has no place where God is. Sin has no place in God's kingdom. God has no partnership with sin. So much so that those tainted with sin have no place where God is. It is not serious. And these names we have in the Bible are supposed to tell us just how bad this thing is that it has no place where God is. Because we have sin. But that's just one. Evil is another. Impurity is another. Rebellion is another. Unrighteousness is another. And all these names are not good. They tell us there's something wrong with this thing that we call sin. That God cannot entertain it. These names are not there to simply say, oh, unrighteousness, evil. No, they have meaning. The impure have no place where God is because God is pure. The wicked have no place where God is. Because of their wickedness. And you know, if we are to go into the Hebrew, these words have meaning. Wickedness is something disgusting, intolerable, something that stinks. To be called a wicked person is not a good thing. That's why the wicked have no place where God is. But wickedness is sin. These are just descriptions of sin that are telling us where God is, there is no sin. God has no partnership with sin. Sin cannot be where God is. It is not part of his kingdom. And it is because of rebellion, of sin, that the world fell apart and human beings were thrown out of the garden. And, and, and cherubims were, were stationed at the gate to make sure human beings do not come back to get the goodies. And this is an enduring problem. And as far as humanity and their relationship with God is concerned. Because for so long as the question of sin abides, then a relationship with God and being a part of his kingdom and being why he is, is not possible. This is why the coming then of Jesus to die on the cross is of utmost significance that we must eat a meal to remember so that we don't forget. We are not supposed to get forget because it deals with this enduring and abiding problem of humanity for which God's wrath is coming. God's indignation, his judgment is coming. God is not going to judge the world and human beings simply because he wants to. No. God cannot be at the same table with sin. Sin has no place in his kingdom and where he is. 
And for that reason, the gospel is captured in the sacrifice of Christ. And when I say gospel, I mean the good news. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 3. Listen to this. And the good news is not about, you know, getting a husband, having a good car, you know, you know and surviving in life. No! Let us listen to what the good news is. And this is the gospel. This is the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1. Now I would remind you, brethren, in what terms I preach to you the gospel, which you received, in which you stand, by which you are saved, if you hold it fast, unless you believed in vain. So he's going to describe the gospel. For I delivered to you as of first, not second, not third, not fourth, not secondary, first importance. Number one, what I received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. This is the gospel, our sins being sorted out by God. Through his son. Because for so long as the problem of sin abides, we are under the judgment of God. And that is not a good place to be. Woe unto us because of sin. And so this really is the gospel that God has had mercy on us that God loves us. He has not let us just to be. He has provided a way out of our sin quagmire. And this is through Jesus Christ. On the cross. His body broken for us. His blood shed for us. That meal is to remind us. Not to forget. Because it all starts there. That is the way we are accepted by God and we have a share in his kingdom and we are his people. Without that, we are doomed. This is why Paul talks of it as the gospel and it is number one. Romans 3, 23 to 25. Since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as an expiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over our former sins. The expiation, purging of our sins by the blood of Christ is what Paul is talking about to the Romans. This is the grace of God. And with that now sorted, we can have a place with God. We can have a relationship with God, peace with God, and be a part of his kingdom. So that in all that Jesus said and did, this was the most important, that it, it was never to be forgotten. Always remembered. Always remembered. And unlike the Passover, it was not simply a meal observed for seven days in a year. It was a meal to be eaten at regular frequency because this was important not to forget what God had done to sort out their sins. And tomorrow I'll be talking more about the events at the cross that point to God's judgment and indignation on Christ that we have escaped because of Christ. So much so that in Luke 24, in describing the content of the gospel, this is what we are told of preaching. Luke 24 and verse 47. 
Let me read from verse 20, 46. Thus it is written, that Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. 47. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations. Forgiveness of sins at the heart of the gospel. My brothers and sisters, members of St. Francis Chapel, please don't take for granted your relationship with God. Because of Christ's sacrifice, we will be spared God's wrath and indignation. We will be spared eternal damnation. Because of that, we now have a place where God is. A share in his kingdom. Because of the sacrifice of Christ. And that we should not take for granted. It is not by our works nor our goodness nor our strength these are the mercies of God for humanity for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son it's about his death because that is what he did so that now praise God hallelujah we have a relationship with God. We are accepted with God. We are a part of his kingdom. We have a share in his kingdom. Because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We are no longer doomed if we believe. And that is why all the days of our lives we ought to always remember where it all began and what has made it all possible. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And for that reason we have that meal at regular frequency. That is our Passover. It is our Passover. Whatever else you may forget about the wonders and goodness of God, this one, please, never forget it. Amen. Let's appreciate Professor Nyende again. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. He is the professor of New Testament. And indeed, you can see how he breaks God's word down. Hallelujah. God hates sin. It is sin that brought Christ. Because of his love, God gave us his son that died, takes our place dies on that cross for the forgiveness of sin. And we've been reminded why the Lord's Supper was instituted. So that we shall forever remember what our Lord had to go through. God hates sin. May we as well hate sin and continue in that vibrant relationship with God. Shall we bow our heads and pray? Reflecting upon your life, where are you at? Are you crucifying Jesus again and again as you live in sin? Do you remember that many years ago, he gave us his perfect gift, his son, 
to die a horrible death because of my sin and your sin. Father, here we are. And we thank you for your word because the interest of your word brings light, knowledge, and understanding. So thank you for allowing your son to break down, taking us back in the Old Testament to remember the Passover and then what Jesus did to institute the Lord's Supper. To always remind us of what he had to go through. Father, we thank you for the love that you have for us. That in your kingdom, sin has no place. And because you love us so dearly, you chose to give us the very best, Jesus Christ. Thank you for Jesus. We give our lives to him. I give my life, Lord. We as a community of believers here at St. Francis Chapel, Lord, we pray that you help us take seriously this relationship that we have in you. That we shall give our life completely to you and hate sin just like you hate sin. We had all fallen short, but through your son, you have reconciled us back to yourself. So thank you. Thank you. To you be the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone says, a big hand clap to our God, the Father again. Hallelujah. It's time for us to, we're going to give joyfully and cheerfully because, and after the giving, that's when we shall go into that, um, exercise of washing the feet so when they call upon you you come and we continue with the service thank you
Father in heaven, we glorify your name, Lord, such a moment as we are. What a wonderful day, wonderful time, Lord, you have given us. As we hear your word, the last supper of Jesus Christ demonstrating, Lord, his love to us. Lord, your servants have shown your love to you by giving this offer to Lord God as a sacrifice to you, Lord. Father, may you bless this. May you bless the hands of God. May you consecrate this gift to that were given to us today that we all tell, Lord. Father, we trust you receive this from our hands for the glory of your name in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. People will say, Amen, Amen, Amen. We shall get seated and invite our friends to receive the cards to come, one to six, to come and then we shall get the rest. Those that received the card, please, because of time. Almighty Father, whose Son Jesus Christ taught us that what we do for the least of our brethren, we do also for him. Give us the will to be the servant of others as he was the servant of all, who gave up his life and died for us, yet is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God and forever. Father, on the night he was betrayed, your son Jesus Christ washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, hear us. On this night, we, he commanded them to love, but suffered himself. We pray for the rejected and the unloved. Lord, hear us. On this night, he reminded them that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, hear us. And together, most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hearts are unprepared. We are not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation. And share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your salvation. That he may live in us and we in him. And that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Now the choir shall lead us in the time of worship. Just go ahead, reflect upon your life. Maybe there is an area in your life the Lord is shining a bright light. Maybe it's pride. 
maybe it is whatever you're struggling with take it to god in prayer even as we emulate christ's example of humility choir Jesus,
let us continue in the same mode of prayer now in union with Christ Jesus you were once far off have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood for he is our peace the Lord Jesus Christ you said to your apostles I leave you peace my peace I give to you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever brothers and sisters the peace of the Lord be with you at the Eucharist we are with our our crucified and risen Lord we know that it was not only our ancestors in faith but we who were redeemed and brought forth from bondage to freedom from mourning to feasting we know that as he was with them in the upper room so our Lord is here now until the kingdom of God comes let us celebrate this feast blessed are you Lord God of the universe you bring forth bread from the earth together blessed are you Lord God of the universe you create the fruit of the vine the night he was crucified our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and having given thanks he broke it gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this all of you this is my body which is broken for you do this whenever you meet in remembrance of me and after supper he took the cup of wine and having given thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this and drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant drink it whenever you meet in remembrance of me as our Savior Jesus Christ taught us so we pray our Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not in temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us, O Lamb of God. You who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us, Lamb of God. You who takes away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy upon us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Dear brothers and sisters, draw with faith to come and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for us and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. This is the gift of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen.
kufuna kwa limu sai Omu endo kwa mulamu kwa limu sai Omu sai kwa Every time you eat the bread and drink the wine, we proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Almighty, let us pray. Almighty and Heavenly Father, we thank you that in a wonderful sacrament, you have given us the memory of the passion of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us the grace so as to revere the sacred mysteries of his body and blood that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruits of his redemption who is alive and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forever amen we shall quickly sit down and they will lead us in that one hymn Jesus for the cleansing power Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His creation? Are you
also want to remind you when you go out, please feel free to join in because Jesus has served um, to dine with Jesus at the end of the service as we remember what Jesus instituted. Praise the Lord. Chapter 13 from verse 16. John chapter 13 from verse 16. It says, Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen. But the scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I am telling you this now before it takes place that when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send, receives me, and whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. Verse 21. After saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified truly truly i say to you one of you will betray me the disciples looked at one another uncertain of whom he spoke one of his disciples whom jesus loved was reclining at the table at jesus's side so simon peter mentioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking so that so that disciple leaning back against Jesus say to him Lord who is it Jesus answered it is he to whom I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it so when he had dipped the morsel he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Then after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. Now no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the money back, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the feast or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out and it was night. Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, you his servants. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised, both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is exalted over all the nations, his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, the one who sits and stands on high, who stoops down to look on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He sits them with the princess, with the princess of his people. He settles the childless woman in her home as a happy, as a happy mother of children. Praise the Lord.
John chapter 13 verse 31 When he was gone Jesus said Now the son of man is glorified and God is glorified in him If God is glorified in him God will glorify the son in himself and will glorify him at once My children I will be with you only a little longer you will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, Where I am going, you cannot follow me, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Then Jesus answered, Will you really lay down your life for me? Very truly I tell you, before the roster crawls, you will disown me three times. Praise the Lord. We are reading from Psalm 114. Psalm 114. When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, Judah was his sanctuary, and Israel his dominion. The sea saw it and fled. Jordan was driven back. The mountains skipped like rams, and the little hills like lambs. What ailed thee, O thou sea, that thou fledest? Thou Jordan, that thou was driven back. Ye mountains, that ye skipped like rams, and ye little hills like lambs. Tremble, thou earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, which turned the rock into a standing water, the flint into a fountain of waters. That's the word of the Lord. John 14, 15, Jesus promises the Holy Spirit, If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him, because it, is ne it neither sees him nor knows him. But you who know him, for he lived with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you before wrong. The world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will realize that I'm in my Father, and you are in me, and I'm in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them in the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me, will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, 
whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I've said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I'm going away and I'm coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I'm going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens. So that when it does happen, you will believe. I will not say much more to you, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me, but he comes so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Come now, let us live. Psalm 116 from verse 10. I believed even when I spoke, I'm greatly afflicted. I said in my alarm, all mankind are liars. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of his people. Precious in his sight, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant. I am the son of your maid servant. You have, loosened, you have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John, chapter 17, beginning from verse 20. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me that they may be one as we are one. I am in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those who you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and you will continue to make and will continue to make you known to, to them in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. The word of the Lord. Shall we stand up? And may the peace of God which transcends human understanding guard our heart and mind in God alone and the blessing of God the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you, upon everyone and everything that concern you and that same blessing make you a blessing. Amen.